In this next question, we have a graph of a function, and we're asked to determine the inverse graphically, then to state the domain and range of both the original function and the inverse. Well, this function is a piecewise function and seems rather complicated. So whenever something's complicated, we try to take a very disciplined approach to it. We're going to look for some key points, switch the coordinates, and determine the, the, the image of those key points on the inverse. Well, some of our key points seem to be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 7, and 2, 3, 2, negative 2, and we see that we're cutting through the point 3, negative 5 here, and that's good to know. What we're going to do now is switch the coordinates of every one of those points, and that's what we've done. These are now in red. The point negative 1, negative 1 hasn't moved at all. The point negative 3, negative 2 has moved to negative 2, negative 3. There's an open circle at 2, negative 2. It's now an open circle at negative 2, 2. And the point 3, negative 5 was indicated, so the point negative 5, 3 is indicated. The point 2, 3 was indicated, so now 3, 2 is indicated, and there was an open circle at negative 1, 7. There's now an open circle at negative 7, 1. Off the graph a bit. And now what we're going to try to do is maintain the integrity of this curve. We had a line, start, uh, a ray actually, starting at this point and shooting through negative 3, negative 2. Well, we'll now go to the image of this point, which t happens to be the point itself, and shoot through the image of negative 3, negative 2. We had um, an open circle at 2, negative 2, and then that curved downwards and out. Now, in terms of the inverse, we can think of it as it, cur it went uh, to decreasing values of y and increasing values of x. So now what we're going to do now is go to decreasing values of x and increasing values of y. Remember we're just switching the x and y's here. They're changing their roles. And this other uh, portion of the curve was relatively straightforward. It was just a straight line in between these two points, and so we'll do that here. So our inverse is the red curve. Clearly it's not a function. The original is, in fact, it would pass the vertical line test. The red curve, the inverse, would not. And now we're asked to determine the domain and range of each of these curves. Well, let's start with the green curve. Um, the domain goes to uh, ever uh, decreasing values of x. There's a closed circle at an x value of negative 1, an open circle here at negative 1, but an x value of negative 1 is included in the domain due to this point here. We include all the values up to 2. Then down here we have an open circle at an x value of 2, but of course 2 is in the domain because of this point. And then we go to ever increasing values of x, and so what we realize is that in fact the, the domain of the green function, the original one, is the entire x-axis. The range is the set of all y below negative 1. This curve and this curve duplicate their efforts in terms of the range. Actually it's all one curve, but that this portion of the curve and this portion of the curve duplicate their efforts in terms of the range. And then the rest of the range is everything from 3 up to and not including 7. So we write that out. The domain is the set of all x element of the reals. The range is the set of all y, such that y is less than or equal to negative 1. 3 is less than or equal to y, less than 7. Well, I bet you we could determine our domain and range of the inverse without even having to look at the graph, but we'll look at the graph anyway. The range is going to be all y on the y-axis because between this curve going infinitely downward, this portion of the curve going downward infinitely, and this portion of the curve tending towards positive infinity, um, and this portion of the curve taking up the slack in the middle of the y-axis, we've in fact covered the entire y-axis, so our, do our range of the inverse is y element of the reals. Our domain of the inverse will be all x values less than or equal to negative 1, 
as well as all x values in between 3 and 7, including 3 due to the closed circle, but not including 7 due to the open circle. And that's what we have. x is less than or equal to negative 1, 3 less than or equal to x less than 7, y such that y is an element of the reals. And why did I think that we could uh, determine the domain of the inverse and the range of the inverse without even looking at the graph? Well, because the domain of the original should correspond precisely with the range of the inverse, and the range of the original should correspond precisely with the domain of the inverse.